So let's get started with the North Woods Cottage. Yes, and I really like this one. It's so cute. Anyways, after you've done your, your backstitch border, which mm -hmm. is the dark border around, you're going to put a basting line, and I don't know if you could see it. It's yes. this green one here, and it's eight fabric threads around all the way around from the border. So you have your quilting ruler out. I do, and you're going to measure in between the basting lines on the outside, both widthwise and lengthwise. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to mark those measurements down because you're going to need them in the next few steps. Good. What's that? This that is looks white. It's foam core board. Oh, okay. And I didn't realize it until recently, but it comes in two thicknesses. This is thicker than this one. That's right. This is an eighth inch and this is three sixteenths. So there's not much difference. Okay. So you can use either You can use either one. Five or six of each one of them. That, de that's right. Depending on how thick you want to make your block. Exactly. Okay. And you have looks like you've cut a few of those. Um foam boards. I have I have cut six pieces according to the measurements I've taken earlier. And then once the six pieces are cut, I've glued them all together. As you can see, they're all glued together. How did you glue them? I glued them with um, a spray adhesive. All right. And so you can get um, an Eileen's uh, spray adhesive. And so you just spray it on one side. And I started with doing two pieces, two mm -hmm. pieces, two pieces. And then I glued oh, thank them you. together. So eventually that's going to be just around the outside really measuring from this basting line it, to this it, basting exactly. line. Exactly. Okay, great. All right, so what are we going to do? How are we going to put that on? Well, after you've taken your measurement, I then trim about five eighths of an inch away from the basting line. Mm. And as you can see, I've zigzagged around the raw edge. Oh, okay, so this is five eighths of an inch from yeah. basting to the yeah. edge. Yeah. Thank you. And now you're going to, I kind of do a little finger press mm -hmm. along the basting mm -hmm. line. Mm -hmm. But you're going to put it on the block, make sure it's all there. And then I'm going to use some sequin pins. What are they called? Sequin pins? Sequin pins. Wh why are they called sequin pins? So usually they're used for pinning sequins to styrofoam. Really? Yeah. And can you get those at Michael's? Or you can get them at Michael's, um, and that's where I got these ones from, or a fabric store, or anything like that. Okay. And so basically I just kind of loosely put them in at first, just to make sure I've got this straight Can and we square. have a look and see what you've done here? Exactly. Oh, you've left parts of them out. Yes. So that they're sticking out still. That's right. Oh, okay, because we couldn't quite see exactly. that. Exactly, and I want to make sure that I've got this straight and square all the way around before I actually push them all the way in. Oh, that makes sense. So you can move them much more easily That's when right. they're not all the way in. Yes. Thank you. Basically, I've got a thimble, and what you would do is just push it in, and then you can push it all the way down mm -hmm. so it's connected. Mm -hmm. I would probably put one in every eighth of an inch to a quarter inch, just so that it's pulled tightly and stretched well. and stretched well gotcha yes. thank you as you can see I did put in quite a few pins I'll say along there that's not every one eighth of an well maybe kind one of eighth. kind of it's <laughs> not necessarily exact but it's close anyway that looks really good and then for the backing I didn't put nearly as many because it doesn't have to be as straight right. as the front just wanted to show how many you put on the back because it's not as easy to see. No. Nope. But you can see that they're like, what, half inch apart? Half inch apart, thereabouts. And how did you do the corners? Okay, what you do for the corners is when you get to a corner, you kind of fold down this corner. Yeah. And then you fold over this uh, side. Mm -hmm. And so you kind of miter the corners, making sure that the t um, fold lines up to the edge. Oh, okay, so the fold itself is right on the edge. That's right. Cool. And the way you started with the with the linen is the same way you start here. You turn it upside down and you put the, the material I on put top. the material and I, I cut it so that it's just up against the edge of the design fabric. Very, so, very precise then. Yeah. What, you, know, you didn't layer this over top. No, I didn't layer them over top. Uh -huh. And what I would do is, you, you know, take a measuring tape uh -huh. and then measure from this side. Uh -huh. And I'm just going to use a ribbon here as an example. Okay. So I would go from this side, mm -hmm. and I would measure it okay. all the way to there. Yeah, right. That makes and sense. And then you have your little Whoops. measurement. <laughs> so 
so you can do that with a measuring tape as well. A measuring tape and then use your rotary cutter and, yeah. and cut the fabric. Nice and, and straight. Give it a good iron <laughs> because you don't want any wrinkles on there. So That's really cool. So now that you've got both the front and the back fabric on, what are you going to do next? The next step is to attach the ribbon. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but I also still have the basting lines in around the outside. So you should probably take those off. So what you want to do is you want to, first of all, make sure you have a nice straight edge on one edge of the ribbon. I'm going to start kind of at the top. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to start with by putting pins in. there and you want to make sure your pins are sharp because otherwise they kind of um, snag as sharp you can pins. see yeah gotcha. yeah otherwise it snags the ribbon itself that's right exactly and then you would go all the way around mm -hmm. to the other edge and then I would cut it so it matches the seams match but not overlap but not overlap okay Lovely, that looks really nice. I yep. see you don't use very many pins. Nope, I've not used many pins. It's just to basically hold the ribbon um, in place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, and I. That's the top? That's the top. Okay. Exactly, because you're eventually going to put a bow on there and it'll cover the seam. Great. But now we're going to start with this gold one and we're just going to, there again, I'm going to trim that edge. Yeah. And we're going to put the gold in, but I'm only going to put one pin in the center. So I'm all ready to make the bows. And I'm going to make sure that I wrap the or the basic ribbon around my hand. I like it because it's blue and it matches the little river on the piece. And then I'm going to cut this so that it's the end, like that. I always cut mine at an angle like that. And then I'm going to put another little bit of a bow on there. And I think the next one I'm going to use is the white wire um, ribbon. And that starts, and that goes around as well. I'm using just ordinary ribbon from Michaels. This one, though, has wire at the end, so I can really shape it later. So I'm going to put a little bit of gold on there. Not too much, just a couple of loops. And finally, a touch of red, because there is a little splash of red. Exactly. And then that all gets put together eventually into our bow. Now, the reason that I'm using all those colors is because I'm trying to color coordinate with the design. So here we have the whole batch already. I fold it in half, and even though this is the fun part, it's also the most difficult. So in order to get started, you want to make the point where the, um, where the bow gets tied together, you want to make it smaller because it's very wide here, and this is where we're going to wrap it together so that there is a small portion that will be tied together. And I take one side um, and I pull out from, be from in between, I pull out alternating sides. So that one goes there, I twist it, and then I do the other one, the one underneath, if I can get it out. There we go. And I twist it, and then I pull this one out, Oh, pull that one out and you almost twist it. Need like tweezers or something like that. <laughs> and twist it. Notice how the twisting is what makes it all function. Twist it. And here is some white. This is the really fun one because of the um, wire. It'll really twist and stay. Yeah. yeah. And there. And then we do these ones. We also have to twist these a little bit. Looks like it's loosening off. So there we go. So that's one side. And then we do the other side exactly the same way. Yeah. So then cut off the ends, yeah. which you don't really need. And then you have your little bow. So now we're going to put the pin in. And really, it's going to take a little bit of doing because it is a very thick bow. But this little pin will sit in there. And then you arrange the little loops the way you like so that it looks really nice. 